Travis is doing it. So the First Amendment says that uh, religions are are not supposed to be given preferential treatment by the law, and that uh, they're supposed to be able to organize themselves into an organization freely. And in today's misinformation and disinformation society, there are religions who think that, hey, you know, we can do whatever we want because the First Amendment says so. Because a certain other person thought Article 2 lets him do whatever he wants. And so, let's go over some scenarios, hypothetically, of uh, situations and see if it's okay according to the First Amendment. We'll start with the milder one. Televangelists. They uh, get on their TV show, they cry, God's going to smite me down if you don't send a thousand dollars immediately. I have to buy a fifth yacht. God said so. It's not me. God wants me to have it. Purely legal. Even though he's scamming his audience. Uh, or the ones who you know, are living in a, a couple relationship and talks about family values. Then you find out his wife is doing the pool boy. Or uh, he himself does little boys. That is a crime. But uh, the religion part still okay. You can believe whatever you want to believe for a religion. Even though the people preaching are not preaching what they're preaching. Are not doing what they're to whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, the prosperity gospel it's a scam. Give me your money and you'll be healed. Power of faith. And the more money you give, the more you'll be healed. Prosperity gospel. You'll prosper by giving away your money. <laughs> uh huh. <clears throat> and and what if these televangelists came right out and said, "Hey, we're going to scam you for your money. You're not going to be healed, but we just want the money." give it to us. You know, it's like a stick-up. Somebody's robbing you at gunpoint. And instead, they're using God as their weapon. You know, would people really join if they were open and honest with people right from the beginning? Hey, join my religion. I'm going to steal your money and promise you things that will never happen to you. Would you join? I would hope not. So let's get into the darker stuff. Satanists. If we're talking the Hollywood style Satanists, because I'm sure the real Satanists are fine, upstanding citizens in the community. <laughs> that Iron Maiden is just being dramatic. If Satanists were to announce in the community, hey, we're, we just started a satanic church in our in your neighborhood we're having this this Saturday night or Sunday night we're having a bring your daughter to the slaughter night hope to see you there would you go <laughs> come on Susie it's time for church <laughs> oh, no daddy <sighs> no I, I would hope people would be smarter than that. Jim Jones, if you remember him, accent or accept has a, an awesome song going over that history. 
if Jim Jones in San Francisco was handing out flyers saying, hey, I'm going to kidnap you to Brazil and then cause you to drink Kool-Aid to, to murder you. And any government official that comes by, yeah, well, I'll murder him. How dare he try to save his daughter and find out what's going on and report back to Congress. Would people have gone with him? If they knew in advance what they he was planning on doing? <clears throat> Heaven's Gate. Hey, I'm starting this religion. We got a comet coming by, so I'm going to claim there's space aliens following right behind it. And the only way to get to them is to kill ourselves. Join my religion today. Meetings at 7 p.m. Would people join if they knew in advance what was intended from the religion? Brian David Mitchell. All Mormons and ex-Mormons know him as Elizabeth, now a national celebrity for her bravery. But uh, can you imagine Brian David Mitchell knocking on the Smart Store? Uh, hi, Mr. Smart. Uh, I, I really think your 14-year-old daughter, she's really cute. I used to watch her while I was mowing your lawn. I, I know I'm, I'm, I haven't been going to church lately, sort of been excommunicated. But I'd really like to add her to my harem for the millennium. Is that okay with you? <laughs> Come on, Elizabeth. You're going with Brian David Mitchell now. Daddy, no. Yeah. You, no. <sighs> Creepy on so many levels, right? And so the FLDS Church of Warren Jeffs, because there's multiple versions. Warren Jeffs. Oh, hey, I don't have any authority. I just think that we should be practicing polygamy. Sort of have this sex thing. <laughs> and by the way, your granddaughters are going to be married to me when you have them. <laughs> Grandpa's going to have a hankering for the granddaughters. And all of the 14-year-old boys, you know, if they complain, well, they're going to be excommunicated and booted out of the community. Uh, it's still disturbing that the FLDS is still in existence, despite Warren Jeff's in prison now. <clears throat> and then, of course, the others that are more militant. You have the one scandal here in Utah, the FLDS group, that is trying to have an exclusive public school for their kids. <laughs> trying to get government money from them. <laughs> for them. <laughs> it's a scam. Can't do that. But nonetheless, they still try. But uh, you got the other ones, especially the ones down in Mexico and the Arizona border, uh, that are, you know, the Mitt Romney organizations <laughs> that uh, enforce the religion with the gun. As uh, they got involved in a uh, was it last year or 2019 when there was a, a, a turf war issue and a rival gang in Mexico uh, just ambushed a whole caravan of polygamous women and children and also got murdered in that as Mitt Romney was part of that family grouping. Uh, and so, what is it, and I'm purposely leaving one out, holding that for the end, see if these organizations presented themselves openly and honestly and up front, nobody would join, I hope. 
I've been waiting my whole life for a mission calling to murder myself. Oh God, receive my soul. I, I, no. It, it's too disturbing to even think about. But that's the whole point, is that these religious organizers, whether they intended to have the consequences that they did, or whether it was the natural conclusion of the seed of what they were promoting in the beginning, people don't know in the beginning, because if you're just judging by the outward appearance, you can't know. Oh, he's a fine, clean-cut young man. <laughs> he's not dressing in robes and living in a tent yet. And the scriptures tell us how to protect ourselves so that we don't get deceived. And yet people don't look to their scriptures for protection from the leaders of the religion that they're in. Or get into. And so, yeah, all of these different groups, the members and followers, at first thought, oh wow, this is so cool, it's hip and trendy. You know, there's even the one where the super girl actor was recruiting for this guy who was doing a sex slave trafficking thing. That's another one. It was more of an intellectual movement rather than a religious movement, but still, it was that same type of thing. And that one, it was from the outset. I mean, if the guy had been open and honest, hey, I'm going to, you know, sweet talk you into thinking I'm a great guy and you're going to go and recruit other women to have sex with me. <laughs> and then it'll destroy your career, you'll be locked up in prison, but hey, I'll get to have sex with lots of different women. Thanks. <coughs> the Matthew 7 scripture tells us exactly how to identify such false prophets, such false religious leaders, those who are trying to scam you. And it's by their fruits. And you don't necessarily identify their fruits in the beginning because they're lying, deceiving, pacifying, flattering. But in and of those those things, you should be able to say, "Oh no, that you're flattering me. I, I'm not going for this. Uh -uh. <clears throat> you're trying to cause fear into my heart that God's going to murder you if I don't give you all my substance and be poor myself so that you can be rich. Yeah, I, I'm sensing a, a scam, and it." It's, it's disturbing that religious followers are so blindly fooled and deceived. And so, Brigham Young, there it is, was just like that. You know, he had his band of merry Danites. Whether they wore tights or not, I don't know, I don't care. Robin Hood men in tights. <clears throat> uh, he had his own religious beliefs that were contrary to Joseph's and there's nothing illegal about that you know Joseph is assassinated Brigham Young decides hey I'm going to do my own religion I didn't really like Joseph's we're not going to have the Book of Mormon we're not going to have the Doctrine and Covenants I'm doing my own thing perfectly fine, perfectly legal First Amendment but nope, he had to go down the dark path. Oh yeah, Joseph Smith, he was doing all these crimes in secret. Polygamy is a crime. 
And so you need to become polygamist in order to be exalted in the highest degree of the celestial kingdom. And, and as a woman, you can't take care of yourself. You don't have any rights, privileges, and freedoms. You're property. So be my property, or one of my other Danites' property, and uh, we'll traffic you out of America because we're sort of being hunted by the law for our crimes and corruption that we kept getting Joseph in trouble for. And we're going to take you into the desert and then still get brothels because you won't be good enough for us. And then we'll murder and, and uh, uh, do our tithing, corruption, and fraud. And then we're going to force you to have the suicide oath pack. If he had been open, would Mormons have gone? No, I'm willing to bet that Hiram's wife would not have gone. She would have stayed with Emma and Lucy. That still disturbs me to this day. Because there's no way she would have if she had known Brigham Young. See, Emma just didn't like him. She and Joseph would talk about him. And so Emma knew that Brigham Young was a slime ball. But, uh, uh, yeah, and Hiram's wife, how did, what'd she know? Because Brigham Young doesn't come out and say, hey, I'm a bad guy, I worship Lucifer. That's why the inverted pentagram of Lucifer was put on the Nauvoo Temple after Joseph died to show that I conquered him. <clears throat> yeah, no, the regular Mormons who were not involved in this underground Danite movement would not have gone with Brigham Young and the Danites. They would have had to find other women to sex traffic. And so, uh, Nelson, even, there's this tendency in Mormonism to forget all things Brigham Young and to only speak of faith-promoting experiences. Oh, yeah, Brigham Young, true prophet of God, true successor, and we're, that's it. That's all about his history. Where's the rest of his history? Where do you, what, what huh? <laughs> well, it's not faith-promoting. Just that part is all that's faith-promoting about him. Well, I guess we need somebody to write a book about him and make it faith-promoting. Yes, he... He attended church faithfully for three years until finally joining the church. I mean, and then joined the church. <laughs> After his wife dies. Well, why didn't he join while his wife was alive? Well, we don't want to talk about that. That's not faith promoting. And so, yeah, you can see how the church is lying, deceiving, flattering, pacifying, and tricking Mormons. That censorship of knowledge, that censorship of the truth, not disclosing the real church history. It's all part of the scam. And they still are practicing the corruption and fraud that they were disincorporated for, as I went over in the video the other day which became the thumbnail also. The Edmunds Tucker Act said we need to shut down that tithing thing. That's a source of misery. With corruption and fraud going on. And uh, they, they didn't have it named as a protection racket back in those days. That wasn't until Rico, uh, I think. Or could have been with the Mafia, the Italian Mafia. But... Uh, yeah, that concept of using money for fraud, or forcing money for fraud, uh, was not named as a protection racket yet. And so, yeah, if it, it's disturbing because I and many Mormons are born and raised into the church. And so our parents 
are being used by the prophets to get us into the corruption. Children paying tithing in the protection racket. <coughs> I mean, that's horrifying. You know, if the church just kept it to, hey, we believe in the Christian Jesus. You know, we're going to throw in some physical attributes to him. But it, it's pretty much the same Easter Jesus. Christmas and Easter Jesus. I wouldn't have any reason to do videos. I mean, yeah, I can criticize Mormonism, but I would be able to do it with all religions. Because I'm attacking religion and religious beliefs. I'm not talking about the corruption that's behind the scenes. The religion is a front for all of these different groups. But it's the corruption and crime and fraud behind the scenes that people don't see and get conditioned to tolerate over the course of time, little by little, or as children growing up in the organization, as it is with the church, that people don't recognize and see it for what it truly is. A whitewashed sepulcher. And, and so, with Nelson, you know, I, I get the Mormons who are, he's a good man, he's a prophet of God, church is true. Yeah, you've been deceived. He's committing a scam. He's committing crimes. As president of the church. You know, when he gets up and says, in a major city yet to be determined in Russia, you're supposed to scream in fear. You're not supposed to cheer. Because Mormons have been brainwashed into thinking, we're converting the Russians. They're no longer going to be corrupt. They're going to now be good. We're turning evil into good. Uh, what? <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be. Well, if we just call it good, then it is. <laughs> no. And so, yeah, when you then recognize the corruption behind the curtain. You know, it's not the Wizard of Oz, it's the Wicked Witch of the West that's behind the curtain. <laughs> ah, my pretties, you thought I died and melted. But, uh, yeah, would Mormons remain in the church if Nelson just came out and confessed? Oh, yeah, we're doing this protection racket for tithing. Yeah, pay up if you want to be a Mormon, if you want to go to the temple. And if you want to be exalted, even though our religion's a fraud, so there is no exaltation for you. It's just an insurance scam. Would Mormons still stick with the church? That is the big debate. Is if people knew up front what they were going to get into if they chose to join and had the choice to make the choice, would they actually make the choice? Because all of us who are ex, we still uh, have those lingering doubts because the organization says, oh, you're going to be apostate. You're going to fight against the church of God. You're evil. You know, you're going to lose the spirit. Those fear-mongering tactics on members of the church from little kids up. And so when we realize, you know, I, I'm not comfortable marrying grandpa. <laughs> Something just doesn't feel right about this. 
I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> I'm just kind of concerned. <laughs> I, I sort of feel like I'm being brought to the slaughter. <laughs> oh my god. You see, the First Amendment does not protect against crime. No. That's the thing. Is How do we get our government to take down these criminal religions? You know, with the coronavirus, yeah, we were able to get a couple of them as religions were peddling coronavirus cures, which were actually harmful drugs, killing people. But, uh, you know, when Nelson says, oh, the healing power of gratitude cures coronavirus, just be grateful, magically gone, his financial scam, oh, fast, we're holding too fast, you got to pay your fast offerings and you'll be cured of coronavirus. It'll magically go away. You know, that is not illegal. It's a scam, but it's not illegal. Making a cure, as you claim, and advertising as such, that's the crime. And I, I, I wish that scams could also be taken down as well. That people would recognize the scam and not fall for it. Because if if the church wants to perpetuate the lie about Joseph Smith, that's not illegal. It's dangerous. It causes harm to Mormons who live their lives believing that way. But apparently it's not a crime. So, but yeah, that's why I do my videos. It's, it's not to attack the religion, even though it's not the same as Joseph's. And I'll point out how they're different, but I always have in your understanding that the church is scamming you, that they're committing crimes to deceive you, or as a deflection and distraction, they're using the religion to deceive you while they commit the crimes in the background. In the, the basements of the temple, drinking the blood of virgin sacrifices. They better not be doing that. Because that's just going to... Uh, it'll just give meat to the MAGA. And all those Q followers. Ugh. So that's that's what happens when you have people who create lies and spread them and get everybody to believe the lies, and then some knucklehead becomes that lie and does what that lie has perpetuated. And that just feeds off of the lie. Ah, I knew it! There was a basement in the pizza parlor. <laughs> oh, God, that's the last thing we need. But yeah, the, the church has been called out as a threat by the Surgeon General. Because the church is spreading misinformation and disinformation about coronavirus as well as Governor Cox because they're not being honest with Utahns and Mormons about coronavirus you have Mormons who are anti-maskers anti-vaxxers who refuse to say no I'm not going to church I'm staying home and staying safe Surgeon General called Nelson a, a threat. So, I mean, dear God. And Mormons don't see it. You know, none of these followers saw it. Not until, uh oh, now we're faced with a faith crisis. Do I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now?
If I go there will be trouble. If I stay it will be double. <laughs> There's our theme song.